Prayer is simply a religious word that means to uh, talk to God, communicate with God. That's what word, prayer means. And we think about prayer sometimes as we close our eyes and stuff and we pray. We means we talk to God. We say amen. That means conversation over with and we get and go on. That's not what prayer is meant to be at all. If, if you picture just a regular conversation with a person, that's what prayer is supposed to be. So if you walk into your, you know, somebody in your family, you don't walk in and say, okay, make sure you do this and this and this, amen, and walk out of the room. Okay? If you do that, I'm just going to say that's poor skills. Okay? We don't do that because we go in, we say something, and then we expect them to answer, right? And then we have a dialogue maybe, and then we leave, Right? And we don't, see, the word amen is it's like a word I use when I pray publicly because it, that way you know the prayer's over. The word actually means so may it be, okay? Um, but it, it, so if I'm praying, I'll say amen so, so you know I'm done praying now. But I don't ever say amen during the week. I never, I shouldn't say never, I mean, unless I'm praying in front of people. Unless I'm praying in front of people, I never say amen. I, I, just like I never say, you know, amen in front of my wife. I never in that conversation. She may be going someplace. I may be going some other place. But we didn't stop talking. You know, we're still in conversation. I expect to talk to her again here shortly type of thing. So when you think about God as a 24-7 relationship, praying continually means you're always in conversation, in communication, in connectedness with him. So a couple nights ago, I went to bed early because it's tired. And at my house, I tend to be the snuggler. My wife tends not to be unless she's cold. Okay? And in her, benef- in her whatever the word is, I'm usually, I'm kind of hot natured, so, you know, it's, like sometimes I just put my hand on her and it'd be like, Oh my gosh, you're burning a hole in me, right? So I, you know, so that's just that's I, I'll give her a little grace. Anyway, so I'm in bed asleep, okay? And what I feel is, I feel I didn't I didn't know how you really want to wake up, but you feel I felt her snuggle up to my back, like really close, right? And let me just tell you something: homegirl was freezing, <laughs> okay? She was cold. Now, if I'm cold. That ain't how it works. If she's cold, then that's how it works. Okay? So, now, I didn't speak, but there was communication that took place. Does that make sense? Right? I mean, I knew she was there. Sometimes, you know, I just reach my foot over, or I reach my hand over, or sometimes she does that. Or sometimes we're driving down a, in a car, you know how you're in a car, you're not talking the entire time, but you're, you're not, you didn't end conversation, you're in communication the entire time. You're seeing the same things, you're hearing the same things, sometimes there's a sentence said and there's pauses. You don't just talk the whole time. Sometimes you see, say sentences and then you think about things for a while, and then you have another conversation about that later. Right? It's, it's just how we communicate. Well, how, why wouldn't our relationship with God be exactly like that? Like when I wake up to use the bathroom, let's say I woke up at 3.30 to use the bathroom, don't you think God's okay hearing me? Or it's 3.30 in the afternoon and I'm doing something, don't you think God's ready to hear me? And sometimes we have to remember that it's not just God, God want to hear us, that we're talking to him all the time, that we ought to always be in the mindset of hearing him how the bible talks about is how in our hearts incline toward his that we're just always in a mode of being receptive to what god may be stirring in us